Hey guys and gals, it's Jim here, and uh, I haven't forgot about uh, the uh, modeling community, and I haven't forgot about building models. I've just been uh, having some other things going on, a little bit of spring cleaning, uh, going through a lot of my uh, hobby supplies. Um, since I've been using acrylics these days, a lot of my model master paints uh a lot of them are so old that they're dried up into jars or rock solid and everything. So I've been sorting through stuff and um, uh, updating my supplies. I uh, took a ride the other day to uh, Hobby Town up in uh, Rockford, Illinois. Picked up some uh, new supplies, paints and things like that. And, and all that to restock. And um, also, uh, I've been busy doing some other things. I have been working on this a little bit. Um... I uh, did get all the uh, side, the, the antennas that stick off the side. I decided to do them in the down position rather than up. Uh, I got all those glued on there since I'm not handling the, mod the model too much anymore. Um, I started painting a little uh, deck vehicles, uh, all that all that stuff in there. And, um, just pretty much sprayed them a flat yellow that I'm doing hand painting on the, on the tires and all that stuff. I uh, got all my airplane wings glued on, and uh, I got one sprue. I just painted the undersides white, painted the top sides an aircraft gray color. Uh, then I got a, once I get those, there's like eight sprues that identical, and then I'll spray them with some um, uh, gloss clear, uh, do the decals, stuff like that, and um, all. Uh, I haven't, you know, I haven't got a lot done on this. Uh, like I said, I've been doing some other stuff, a little bit of cleaning around the house, some spring cleaning and things since the weather's been starting to, um, uh, get a little bit more spring-like now and then. Uh, when I was at the, um, Hobby Town the other day up in Rockford, I was going through their model kits and everything, see if there was anything interesting. And I came across, uh, um, Hobby Boss. 700 scale uh, sea wolf submarine kit that's uh <laughs> i don't know if you want to call it a kit it's only got like i think seven parts and that includes uh the base but um i came across that uh, little model there and i thought it'd be pretty cool it kind of gives a little bit of an idea there it's close enough in scale to the uh, aircraft carrier gives you an idea of just how big an aircraft carrier actually is uh uh, the submarine's a little bit over the length of a football field, somewhere about there. And the Enterprise aircraft carrier is almost uh, four football fields long. So I thought it'd be pretty cool. I painted it up, assembled it, painted it up and everything. You got a little uh, base that comes with and everything. So uh, I thought it'd be pretty cool. I might uh, mount it down on the corner of the base someplace or, or that there, or just set it on there and up. And that, but I thought it'd be pretty cool to do, like, for a size comparison and stuff like that. Um, ordered a couple um, kits for uh, future builds. Come down the line, because I don't keep a stash. So, uh, got some kits to keep me busy through the spring and summer months and all that. I uh, was going to order the Star Trek uh, 350th scale um, USS Grissom. Uh, it's out of stock, evidently, uh, with shipping problems. They haven't been getting their full uh, full supplies in. So once I find someplace I got it at back order, once that gets in, that'll ship out to me and all that. So um, in the meantime, I decided to pick up a few, order me a few other kits that are available. As far as, uh, I did order, uh, actually I ordered an, uh, another ship. It's an Academy model, 350 at scale. Uh, frigate that's uh, Oliver Hazard Perry and um, ordered a couple uh, 350th scale uh, Hobby Boss submarines to go along with it uh, again kind of like for a size comparison and all that but uh, just something different to build um, being I grew up in Chicago I used to go perch fishing down at Navy Pier uh, all, all, all through the summer and everything and um, they used to have the old silver sides there until they moved it out to uh Manitowoc, Michigan, uh, to the, um, um, to the museum and stuff. They got it docked out there and all that. But, uh, we used to go fishing over by Navy Pier and that submarine was a good, uh, gathering spot for perch, uh, lake trout, 
salmon, stuff like that. You always, you never knew what you'd catch when you tossed your line underneath that submarine. So, um, used to, used to have fun fishing there and always got, uh, checked out the submarine. What did go on a tour a couple times and stuff. And that was a lot of fun and everything. Uh, that was the old Gato class submarine. Um, so that's what, that's what I've been having going on. And all that, I've always been interested in ships, you know, submarines, things like that. So, um, that's what's going on now. I still, uh, still haven't got back to the Missouri with the rigging. That's going to be, uh, down the line a couple of weeks and stuff. I want to get this finished up. And, um, I just kind of slowed down after doing the assembly on these models, all the major stuff, all the tiny parts. I need a little break to rest the eyes up and get them back in focus and everything, uh, for normal, normal daily daily life and all that but um yeah I, I thought it'd be pretty cool I used the same uh uh my Hall Red Mix my um Tamiya XF5 and I think it's XF15 the Hall Red which is almost like a chocolatey brown and all that so um I did my own mix and I in the submarine they call for the same uh they call it interference red the navy uh navy um name for the color so I painted up the uh hall on a submarine the same way and uh, all that so um it's a pretty cool little model you know it was it was cheap like only i think six and a half bucks or something so um uh thought it would be pretty cool to have a little submarine to display with it like i says for a size comparison um other than that um not much else going on with uh with building uh just slowly working on this a little bit couple hours a day and all that no big rush and also um that's going to do it for now. Uh, I'm still alive. Haven't dropped off the face here in case anybody was wondering. Um, still got to do the little uh, um, gun barrels on the phalanx guns on the sides. There's three of them. I haven't put those on yet. I got to get those painted up and thrown on there. So um, that's it. So um, I want to thank all my subscribers. Thanks for everybody that's been... Uh, Following these builds, thanks to all my new subscribers, thanks for all the comments you guys have been leaving me, thanks for hitting the like button, uh, weather's starting to get a little bit nice, so modeling sometimes slows down and uh, get some stuff done outdoors, and pretty soon we'll be mowing lawn again, uh, doing yard work, things like that, so um, that's uh, that'll kind of take a little bit of time away from the hobby too, and all that, um, I still like to get out now and then and do some sightseeing and nature and stuff and that. And um, also, um, another thing about model ships, I never never told you guys when I was, um, before I moved out to where I'm at now, when I was still living in Chicago working in a machine shop, I worked for a big company on the southwest side of the city called U.S. Industries. And... Another thing that sparked my interest in uh, ships, I was interested in them even before I was working as a machinist there when I got out of high school, but um, another thing that sparked my interest a little bit more even was um, a couple of jobs we did uh, as far as the government w went. We um, we did manufacture all the uh, MX above ground MX missile launchers way back in the day. And also, and also, um, we had to, uh, to contract all your, um, your modern day, um, guided missile cruisers. Now your destroyers and stuff like that, they call them eight cell decks where they shoot the tomahawks and things from the guided missiles. Um, we, uh, had the contract we used to build the, they were called eight cell decks where it's all the framework, the hatches, and we worked in, um, tens of thousands, the tolerance on those, they had to be. They had to be perfect fit and everything. It was all ar armor plate steel. That was really tough to work with. Um, if you took a piece of armor plate steel up to a regular grinding stone, it would literally disintegrate the grinding stone. It was so hard and everything. So we had to get special equipment as far as grinding stones went. Um, our welders had to get certified by the government. Any kind of welds. They uh, couldn't have no cracks or air pockets in them. They uh, had special equipment that they'd actually do almost like an x-ray to make sure that the welds were uh, were nice and solid and everything and uh, no stress. Uh, they, uh, they went through all kind of stress tests and everything like that. So um, that was real interesting. I used to um, mill out all the um, openings where the hatches went and everything. Like I said, we worked in tens of thousands 
of uh, inches tolerances and stuff, you know. And um, there was there was very little room for error when we machined all the uh, all the parts for those and everything. And uh, we did the complete assemblies, and they got shipped out to uh, the shipyards where they uh, were building those uh, destroyers and stuff like that. And um, you'll notice if you ever see a picture of the the um, guided missile destroyers and stuff like that, the modern day ones like your Arleigh Burks and stuff like that. You notice on the fore and aft decks, there's a uh, uh, little raised up areas and it looks like they got like eight or 16 hatches that's exactly what we manufactured at the shop where I worked and stuff we did a lot of a lot of government stuff through the year that had to do with the military and stuff like that but um, that, that was always an interesting part of the job actually doing something that you know protected our country and stuff so but anyway um, that's gonna do it for now so uh Thanks for everybody. Thanks everybody for being patient and waiting for the next video. Um, thanks for following along with these builds, and I'll be uh, I'll be getting back to doing uh, some update videos on uh, these models, you know, on a regular basis. Again, I just like I said, I just had some other things that needed uh, some attention and stuff like that, so I took some time off to get some of that stuff done. So, till the next time, everybody, take care. Have a great weekend. And we'll talk to you soon with another update on the uh, two ships that I've been working on. Okay, take care. Bye.